John Dwayne called me about 15 minutes ago. He's not feeling so well, so I wished him wished him well. But we have a quorum with uh, an official quorum with Laura, Tom, and myself. So first of all, is to welcome Herb Herb Gestalder. Uh, Thank you. Uh, he's done a terrific job with some of the ponds issues because he, he is the chairman of the Gupaka, the Gulp, Gulp Pond uh, Owners Association. Um, and also a very capable, capable environmentalist. Um, I would just say um, as background, there's a little bit of method to, the, to what I have in mind. Uh, we still have a fair bit of work to do on the harbor plan, as we will discuss. But then I would like um, by next summer to move to uh, having a look at the ponds. We wrote a report about five or six years ago, and I think we felt that things were in pretty good shape. I, I just hear drum beats now that make me a little worried. Yeah. So um, in order to do that officially, what we should really do this time is also review our charter. So in two or three meetings from now, um, I'll ask us to look at our charter and uh, I have some ideas on how to, how to change that. The original charter was put together in 1995. It's not surprising if it would be a bit out of date. Um, first uh, item is to try to wrap up the harbor management plan I had some comments from uh, both uh, Tom and uh, Laura. Uh, looking at Laura's email, Laura, you asked a question about the energy committee. Um, there were some things on it, John, that looked like they were a hangover from the last yeah. round. I had, put, I had suggested um, an action item for the energy committee, but the more I thought about it, they're so, really focused on reducing the carbon footprint and not about the environmental consequences that I thought we should just dilute, delete all those references. Okay. Um, I can try and share screen on this and we can okay. go through it if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I thought our last version actually had, and and this is now our last version, but the one prior, I yeah, thought- This is the last version. I, I can tell that because the March 2021 is in red. Yeah, I'm just saying I wasn't sure that the updated one, I thought we had the uh, in-color seal of the town on the last version prior to this, but this is the one we're rolling with, so. Okay. Yeah. So I just I just thought the reference to the energy committee, I thought it had been removed in this. It was out in the recommendations for the intro, but it was still in the very final. And that's why I was asking where you wanted to, if you wanted to get rid of it in the final or put it back in the intro. What do you mean by the, the, the final? This so is, we have a, a summary of all our recommendations. Oh, okay. Let, let me see that because I think I probably yep. missed it. So I was just double checking that we had all the same ones on the summary that were now in the updated version. So this is the old one here, Energy Committee. I, 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 I still think that's in, I, I think their work, yeah. Obviously having a good carbon footprint is, is important to the town, but the, the projects they work on and the projects we work on are so isolated from each other that I would, I would delete this. Okay. That's my recommendation. That's fine. So now this matches what's in the introduction. Okay. So in black font. And then the other thing, there's something from about uh, dredging and I, I see some changes that need to be made in that. Um, 
The reference to Cape Cod National Seashore was in the prior version of the summary, but it's not in the chapter. Do you want that? I, on that? I want that removed. Okay. And the other thing that's more, more important is, first of all, to put action by NRAB should go before dredging task force. Because I think we have, we have, and instead of dredging task force, it should be the Marina Advisory Board. So do you want dredging task force in there at all or just Marina Advisory? Just, just Marina Advisory Board. I met with the uh, Marina Advisory Board and they were very helpful and uh, made some good recommendations. And I, th I think they're, they're beginning to look forward to what happens after dredging, um, which, is, which is what our, our chapter on, th on thin layer deposition is. Tom, Tom raised the question of what we should, whether we should call thin layer deposition, thin layer deposition or something else. Tom, all the feedback I've had hasn't made a distinction between one or the other. It just says- it, it, I think as long as we're consistent in what we call it, uh, you know, the, the, I said you, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to look at yeah. that article I sent out from the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, their summary is uh, everything they list calls it thin layer placement, but you know, I don't, I don't think we need to quibble about what's in there now. Well, actually, mm. there has been some complaints about some of the work that perhaps it was the Army Corps who did it about putting so much stuff onto a salt marsh that it acts like a, a coating. And, and I think, I don't know, thin layer deposition maybe sounds a little less intrusive. Anyhow, uh, we could pick one or the other. I guess thin layer deposition is the first thing I heard. So we, we are consistent calling it that now. Well, okay. then let's just call it that. Yeah, that's that's uh, true. Mm, mm. Um, so is everybody okay with the changes on the first page? Do you want me to now accept them or? A lot of the red comments Um, come from um, members of the Conservation Commission who, oh, good. particularly John Portnoy and Barbara Brennesell, who made a considerable effort to read through this. And um, so uh, not all of the red things are, are theirs, but uh, some uh, a good part of it are. And this business about um, you know, the wealthy bringing in a red list uh, on, on the, in terms yes. of water quality in the harbor, that came from directly from John Portnoy. So um, I think it's important to follow up on their comments. Right. John, how else do you, what else do you want to address in this while we're... No, we're the, I, you know, everything red was what I is what I did. So I'm. Far, I thought I'm, it looked I'm, good. I did add a few corrections on things. That's, there. That's the word typing mm. and whatnot. Um, you know, Laura. Part of part of what's on my mind too, as we go through this, is it. I have found that every time I read it, I see other things I could have said. I know. <laughs> it's just like what, when do you know a painting is finished? You know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There's one thing, Laura, that you had sent in your email a couple of days ago. You, you referred to a, a reference about Narragansett. And I, yeah, I put that back in. That's what I was just looking for. I think it's where you're talking about. Um, that's, a, that's where they tried some thin there deposition. There it is. Somehow yeah, that's, that's, it had disappeared and I put it back. Yeah. Yeah. So you the reference the reference once was just for Rhode Island, and then I confirmed it was in Narragansett Bay. So let's leave the Narragansett there. Okay. Uh, 
I think that's the end of my questions per se. The rest were, I'll just flip through. That's now consistent with the summary in the back. Well, I can go through this for um, one more time when we get off. Okay. And then send it to everybody. Um, well, here's, okay, let's see. We'll, There's something about there's something else about Duck Creek Marsh here in red that, that needs to be included. I guess, Laura, just thinking about the process. Mm -hmm. um, if John were here, we could we could go more quickly. Um, I guess it, let's finish going through it. Send it out to everybody. Well, take a vote on it first. I think we should do that. Uh, send it out for everybody unless they see some sort of last minute something major. And then I'd ask John to put it in a, in a proper format so we could uh, ask the Board of Selectmen to accept it and approve it as a final version. Okay. And I, I think I will we just went by a couple of red things. Yeah, the, I was just looking for, for any content that was mm -hmm. than what um, Conscom and Shellfish people see if there's anything we needed to talk about. Okay. I, th I think we've got it though. And I can, yeah. I'll just give it one last look before I send it around. Are you, are you comfortable, Tom? Yes. Yeah, this it, it looks good. All right. <clears throat> then I would like a, a motion that the um, committee ac ac accept the, the harbor management plan and prepare it for submission to the board of selectmen and final approval. Uh, I'll move that in those words. <laughs> Second. <laughs> okay. I hope I can remember the words when I make the, make the minutes. Uh, Tom, a, a vote, aye or nay? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Three nothing and one abstention. Um, terrific job. Terrific job. I appreciate everyone's input. That was a lot of work. But um, I think it's a good uh, it's a it's a it's a good piece of work, and it's 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 getting support. Um, second thing is has to do with um, the uh, the the curly report. Um, which for Herb's background, but would help all, all the rest of us, um, a gentleman called Curley, who was at that time working for the uh, Division of Marine Fisheries. So, this is back in the earlier mid seventies, uh, led a project to make a, a full oversight of um, the Wellfleet Harbor as a habitat. So they looked at shellfish, they looked at water quality, they looked at um, algae. And uh, if that report is on the, the website, the, town web, the, uh, the, the NRAP page on the town website, if you would like to look at it. Very I read it today. Okay. I read it today, very John. Interesting report. Their, yeah. their, their final comment was that this work should be uh, repeated every 10 years and we're now pushing 50 years. 
um, which is embarrassing. Um, I have, together with John, I have met with um, uh, members of the Shellfish Advisory Board. We did that last night. Um, they were uh, very supportive, very, uh, they, would, they wanted to see to get, go ahead. The uh, shellfish constable was present. She also wanted to see it go ahead. Turns out one of the members of the board of selectmen was also present, Ryan Curley. He said he wants to see it go ahead and would offer any, any uh, help we, we could. Um, I have I have to say that um, I have to accept the mea culpa. We have a draft of the work um, uh, from the Center for Coastal Studies, a draft proposal, and that had a budget of about sixty three thousand. And I knew of several places where I could go to and get um, that money, but those places both required um, some sort of matching funds up to about 25%. Mm -hmm. And I misread the draft proposal that I, we got from the Center for Coastal Studies because they had built in a very substantial amount of matching um, funds of their own. So had I recognized that, we could have potentially been way ahead of ourselves. We are now in a, a considerable scramble. I have proposed, I sent out to you all a, a draft of a, another ATM article, annual town meeting article, mm -hmm. um, which allows us to raise sufficient amounts of money. Um, uh, I don't know when um, uh, the, the, the select board will accept uh, new proposals for, for annual town meeting. That, wait a minute, that word, um, it's appropriate and or transfer. Yeah, you got it. Uh, I'm not sure, even sure this is the best language we could use, but I sort of I put it together. It, it follows the structure of other articles. Um, the other problem that comes up is $65,000 requires a, <laughs> a, a RFP, a mm. response for proposal. Mm. Um, I talked with Ryan Curley about that. We emailed and he, he did make the point that it had to be done in a um, unbiased way, um, <clears throat> which means that none of us could participate in evaluating the, um, any response to the request for proposal. Um, there is a very strong case that the Center for Coal Studies Studies is the best people to do this because they've done it elsewhere and they have tremendous background knowledge about the harbor. So John, you're saying we'd have to send it out to other uh, potential uh, participants other yeah. than Center for Coastal Studies? Well, they would be included, but there may yeah. be a, there may be a competition. Yeah. So so John, did their offer for some matching funds terminate? That we have to raise the full sixty five or no? And but what what I'm what I'm scrambling to do, Laura, is to see if we can get some work done this summer. And um, mm. if mm. the board of selectmen, if we're not late, and the board of selectmen approve this request then um, town meeting is June 5th and there's enough time between now and June 5th to go through the RFP process. And so if um, 
all our lucky stars hold by the morning of June 6th, um, we would have have the money and know where it's going. Out of curiosity, what's the threshold for RFP? 25. 25, oh. So there are a lot of moving parts here. Yeah. And uh, um, I would be very disappointed in um, Center for Coastal Studies and John Duane would be very disappointed if we could get something started this summer. It may be um, with some help from the Friends of Herring River and the shellfish uh, constable and a little of our money, we've, we've, we will have a thousand dollars left over to, to, we could spend before June 30th and another thousand right after. So 2000, um, we might be able to get a start on it this summer, but on a small scale, but um, that still would be disappointing. So the, there are two things if, does anyone see any change they would like in the language of this NRAB request? And then I would need the committee's support to um, send it to the board of selectmen and see if they would um, consider it next Tuesday. Their agenda gets put together on Friday. So I, I would send this off right after. Uh, um, John, is there, uh, if uh, suppose we just uh, went for less than this amount and went for 25,000 instead and to get a preliminary uh, start in the, in the, in the project, uh, I don't suppose there's a way to do that without making a full commitment to them. Is there, uh, That's I mean, it would be- That's where I was headed too, Tom. In, with the question about threshold, yeah. Actually, there is, mm. I think. Let me think about this. Mm. The, what the $65,000 says is that the vote is to raise and appropriate or transfer for, but to raise up to $65,000. We, we don't have to raise it all at once. So I suppose that if the, and I'll, I'll have to check this also, but I suppose that we could if this is approved, get started this summer in the way you suggest. You know, money, money from NRAB, um, less than 25,000 and money uh, maybe from shell fishing, something like that. So I would explore that. But I don't think we have to say that in this. The, the, the previous one of, I, of these that I've worked on was was the one for the um, uh, black black mustard report, and it took us two or three years to figure out how to spend the money, and uh, we finally came up with a contract that was less than twenty five thousand. It was about twenty three thousand, and. Mm -hmm. um, went ahead with on that basis. So I will I will check Tom and see if we can do that, but we can't do that without um, this being approved. So do you wanna say the sum of up to 65 since we may talk to them in that type of, I put that here. Uh, some of, yeah, and it should be sum of 65,000, shouldn't be up to. Okay. You do want up to or not? No, I don't want up to because I was okay. looking at the way it was it was written before and it was the sum of twenty five thousand. Doesn't really say Fine. up to. Yep. Doesn't have to be raised all at once. That's just that's just a limit, as I understand it. Can I ask a question? Is, is with the, whatever amount of money is raised, is the object to basically replicate the curly? Uh, Report? Part of the curly report, Herb, um, what we 
talk about in the article is investigating the fauna and flora of well-feed harbor, especially the shellfish and finfish. That's, that is what's in the uh, discussions we've had with the Center for Coastal Studies. Okay. Part of the curly fort was, um, for example, water quality. Yes. There is yeah. all there is already ongoing work on water quality. It happens to be done by the coastal studies by a, a woman called Amy Costa, Dr. Amy Costa. So that's not included in this because it's ongoing. Okay. Um, there's there's some work by the Audubon about diamondback terrapin. So we don't have to worry about that. It's ongoing. But there is a there, there is a belief that the CCS could do the study for this amount of money. Yes, we've okay. had conversations with them. Um, okay. They're comfortable with doing that. Uh, okay. I have not talked with them about getting started at the twenty-five thousand dollar <laughs> amount, but I think that is doable. I, I think that could be worked out. John, does it have make any sense to to reference that <laughs> was part of the our um, harbor management plan and why we're linking it into being the oh, yes it makes a lot of difference because it was it it was a, and that would go under the summary yeah okay so um maybe overview of wellfleet harbor as recommended this review of wellfleet harbor was it was recommended in the uh, Harbor Management Plan. I mean, March, yeah, thank you, you've already, you're ahead of me. That's a great idea. I don't know if we need to go into any more detail than that or what do you think? Well, I, I, I don't want to. Or you just do it verbally, I, maybe. Yeah. I, I, if we start, if we start talking about, you know, we're, we're, we're rest, investigating the flora and fauna in Wellfleet Harbor, especially shellfish and fish, uh, finfish. That says what we're going to do. If you start saying how you're going to do it, you, you get into the weeds pretty quickly. And um, I was just thinking about it. I mean, it is it is something that we view as pretty critical in combating the future health of the harbor, particularly in conjunction with changing climate and all the other environmental impact. That's good language under the summary. Why don't we add that? Um, I'm just spitballing. Y'all can chop it up. No, well, that's that's. Change. Yeah, so the, the, the vote I need is to submit this to the select board. Um, if it's too late, they'll tell us and we'll have to scramble some other way. Um, 
if not, I hope they would put it on the uh, warrant. And uh, I will talk with uh, my con the contact at the Center for Coastal Studies is um, Owen. And uh, I will, uh, I'll see what he thinks about the, the possibility of doing something for 25,000 or less. If that is in fact, um, um, So may have a vote. I guess that's what I need is a motion and a vote. And does the ATM th header need any other alternative? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, fine. It's fairly standard jargon. Okay. If you if you could send me the revised, I will send it to you. Yeah. Okay, that's terrific. Um, but I need a vote that authorizes me to place this uh, before the select board and see what they do. Tom, you want to, are we all just voting? Oh, uh, I'll move that we place this article before the select board for approval. Second. Aye. Aye. Terrific. Thank Aye. you. <laughs> Um, the, I, the, the, the next action item in the agenda was review ATM article as approved by select board. And um, the article which the select board has already approved for inclusion on the warrant is to see if the town will vote and raise vote to raise and appropriate and, and or transfer from available sums as sum of 25,000 or any other sum for the purpose of investigating and recommending practical engineering me methods to reduce the scope and expense of future North Channel Harbor dredging. The summary, that is the, the little story afterwards, seeks funding for study of Wellfleet's Marina to evaluate and develop a plan to replace marine and north channel dredging with a natural distribution of dredge spoils onto the Duck Creek marshes. Um, my only problem with this is I realize in when I dashed it off that is this res restricts ourselves to study of the north marina channel and I've seen ways that I think the same technology could be used for all of the all of the dread, inner harbor dredging, including the, the um, mooring basin and the, the um, uh, at the launching, launching site. And I thought to myself, well, maybe I, we should change this. The more I think about it, that just, comp that just complicates things. Anything we learn about the North Channel dredging um, can be um, applied to other locations. And I, I think the fact that we're emphasizing, we're looking at one location um, makes the engineering development more credible. So that's why I, I had it on the, I put, I put this discussion on the agenda and then I decided you know, my own view is uh, just to leave things as they stand. But um, I, I am willing to, your counter arguments to my counter argument. Is it possible to go back and amend it once work is underway and say, we'd like to broaden the scope or? Well, the point is that the technology is, is the technology is trans, transferable. Then you we're probably fine. Yeah. It, 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 Laura, what, where I got myself hung up is um, I know the the morning the, the morning basin is out in Chipman's Cove, and I I I know that 
um, there, there not been a good study of, of the um, current flow in Chipman's Cove. So I, I thought it wouldn't be, I, I couldn't guarantee to myself that this method would work in Chipman's Cove because you have much slower currents than you mm -hmm. do going up Duck Creek. But then I realized, you idiot, that the mooring basin is not far from the channel that's taken by the water that's going up in Duck Creek. That, that runs between the launching, the launching site and the mooring basin. So all you have to do is, is get the appropriately dispersed material from the mooring Just basin. Just push it out. And it's on its way. Mm. And why it took me two and a half weeks to figure that out, I don't know, but there we are. The point is that the technology transfers. How you dredge the material off the off the bottom, how you assure that it's um, not that it's that it's unflocculated, how you, how you ensure that it stays in suspension as it makes the trip up Duck Creek. All of that all of that technology transfers. So once you figure it out in one place, you figure it out in, in the other. There's something else I should mention. Uh, I met a, a gentleman stole. Um, Steve, Steve Swain, I, I hope I have the name right. I apologize to him if I don't. He's an interesting guy. He um, is an artist and has some of his works uh, for sale in the, in the small uh, shop that's next to uh, the Pearl restaurant. Mm. Um, but he's also taken a uh, an interest in dredging. Several people have said I should talk with him about dredging technology, which is very important to what we do. Mm -hmm. um, he and I have exchanged a couple of emails. Uh, he's in the Bahamas, I'm in Arizona, so we agreed to get together in early April. Um, he has a different idea <coughs> of what to do to dredge spoils. He wants to take them, dry them and condition them, and sell them as fertilizer. And, and uh, if that works, good. If what we work, propose works, good. If both work, even better. Because they, they're both attacking this uh, enormous sum of, sum of money that um, uh, the, the town has to spend on dredging. So um, I hope he can join. I hope I will have a meeting with him um, uh, in maybe late April, early May, and have a chance to talk with him. Uh, he's an interest. He sounds like a very interesting guy. I haven't talked with him; just emailed. His wife is pretty interesting too. Sarah Swain and the O Boys. You know them? No, I, I'm <laughs> local I'm, rock I'm, band. I'm culturally way out of touch, Tom. Who? <laughs> <laughs> who, who are they? Or, uh, she, it's a local band that plays around town, uh, you know, when, when there's no COVID. She's very good. She's excellent. Okay. <laughs> anyway. It's amazing what you, what you learn when you study Harvard dredging. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, John, uh, on this article, do we have to be specific about the North Channel or can we just sort of word it such that we, if I thought they of this approved it, time, I would have worded it differently, but I, I don't want to yeah. change the situation now. Okay. And I think actually that I think the North Channel is easier because the the, yeah. um, the, the flow distance is less. And the, as I say, the technology transfers. Mm. Um, I, um, I had sent some draft minutes from our last meeting, January 28th. Are there any corrections or comments? Um, there was a typo or two, which I've fixed on. I think the of we had a capital O and there was a spacing thing or something, but the content was fine. Okay, well, mm -hmm. I'll just look through more closely what I have, Laura, and uh, that, that, gets, that I, gets- I'll send it to you with the other. Oh, okay, fine, terrific. Um, but I need a, a vote to submit that um, uh, to the town clerk. 
who, who will post it. So I, I move that the minutes of January 28th, 2021 um, as amended be submitted to the town clerk. Second. Second. Third. Okay. Aye. Aye. All in. All in. So um, thank you very much. Uh, there's been a lot of good work this winter. Uh, we may have to have, depending how a number of things turn out, we may have to have a meeting again uh, within the next couple of weeks. Or we may not to have, we may be able to wait in, in later in the spring. I, I, um, I think it'd be very good for all of us uh, uh, to um, think about what we need to do um, moving forward. And uh, I've raised the issue of ponds, um, but there may be other approaches or thoughts. Um, Herb will be on the agenda of the select board on Tuesday. Yes. Yep. Usually Herb, those, those um, appointments to town committees come fairly early in the select board meetings. So you don't have to sit for the whole, you won't have to sit through the whole thing. But, okay, but, but, I, but I should be there for the, for the yes, meeting. Yes, and okay. I will, um, I will okay. Um, sit in and um, if necessary uh, make some supporting comments. Well welcome okay. Herb it's great to uh, have another face with us here. Thank you I look forward to it <laughs> certainly uh, mm. you have the most interesting topic <laughs> subject matter <clears throat> so yeah. good weekends to all and uh, mm. uh, thank you for your thank you for your help well, John, you're in Arizona and I'm in California, and uh, it just shows the magic of uh, high tech can get us together here, I guess. Yeah. Actually, I've, I have, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Tom, Arizona doesn't do daylight savings. So oh. The time difference here is three hours, not. That's right. Uh, same as you. So it's quarter to five here in LA. Yeah, well, that's where we are here. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, mm. on the board of the Friends of Herring River, they have a meeting tomorrow, which starts at eight Eastern Daylight Time, and <laughs> I allowed us how maybe I'd skip that one. <laughs> I, I'm not at my best at five in the morning. Have good weekends, all, and thank you for your help. Thank okay. you, okay. Thanks, leader. John. Thanks, all. Thanks, Bye. John. Bye -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Mm.